Hello, my name is Alan Ocampo and I'm an Applications Engineer supporting TI's Clock and Timing Products portfolio. In this video, I'd like to introduce the Ultra Low Jitter LMK00334 and 338 HCSL fanout buffers. These 4 and 8 output HCSL fanout buffers are compliant to the PCIe Gen 1, 2, and 3 standards. Let's take a look at the features and a block diagram of the 8 output device. Both of these devices feature ultra-low additive jitter of 30 femtoseconds RMS at 100 MHz with the PCIe Gen 3 mask applied. This provides a lot of timing margin for the PCIe serial link budget. The devices also feature two universal inputs and a third input for a crystal, so this device has flexibility to accept single-ended or differential inputs as well as a crystal. The device features very high power supply ripple rejection to minimize the influence of power supply noise on the output jitter. Now I'd like to demonstrate the performance of the LMK00338 fanout buffer in combination with the CDCM6208 low jitter clock generator. Here we have the LMK00338 EVM, which is receiving a 100 MHz input clock from the CDCM6208 low jitter clock generator EVM. The 100 MHz input is being routed to the LMK0338, which is performing buffering and level shifting to the HCSL outputs. Those outputs are being routed to our LaCroix scope through the ONET 1191 limiting amplifier EVM. This limiting amplifier provides a very high input slew rate on the differential signals to the scope to minimize the impact of the scope's jitter measurement noise floor. Here on the scope, I'll go ahead and uh, clear the uh, waveform uh, mem from memory and perform a new capture to capture two milliseconds worth of data. This consists of uh, 200,000 cycles of the 100 megahertz clock, which will go ahead and save to the scope memory so we can post-process it using the Intel clock jitter tool in the next step. So now I'll go ahead and save this data, minimize the scope screen, and go ahead and load the captured waveform to our, into the Intel clock jitter tool. So what this tool does is basically uh, perform an FFT on the uh, extracted TIE data from the captured waveform, apply the PCIe system transfer function, uh, in this case for PCIe Gen 3, and then perform an inverse FFT to convert back to a filtered time domain jitter measurement. Here we can see that the RMS jitter for the CDCM6208 and this LMK00338 fanout buffer comes out to be 66 femtoseconds RMS, which is very, uh, very good jitter and uh, falls well below the one picosecond maximum spec for PCIe Gen 3. To show the additive jitter performance of the, of the LMK00338 clock buffer alone, we need to now uh, capture the uh, jitter of the clock source alone without the buffer. Uh, to save time, I've already captured this data ahead of time, and now I'll go ahead and load it into the uh, clock jitter tool and rerun the script for PCIe Gen 3. So we can see that the source jitter for the clock generator alone is 62 femtoseconds. So with the 66 femtoseconds total RMS jitter and the 62 femtoseconds source jitter we can compute the additive jitter of the LMK00338 to be less than 30 femtoseconds. And again, this provides 70% less jitter than competing PCIe clock buffers on the market and enables you to achieve higher timing margins in the overall PCIe serial link budget. For more information on the LMK00338, please visit ti.com slash LMK00338 and thanks for watching.